Hello, good afternoon, Ash from London here again with another album ranking. Now I'm um, carrying on a little bit with my uh, the teenage years, the bands I was into back then. Um, I've, also, I've done five videos so far featuring bands that I was into at school as a teenager but didn't follow in the years after. And then I did one on King Crimson, which is one of my uh, school days bands that I did follow. Uh, and still following today, if they're up to doing something. Uh, the next, this one is about um, a band that I basically covered their entire career while I was at school. I followed them right throughout because they had a very short career and they lasted about two years. And that band is Baker Gervitz Army. Uh, they're a band that I've already featured in this channel. I did a video about uh, lesser known British rock bands of the 70s, which uh, if you haven't seen, I suggest you check out. You might find it interesting. But yeah, I mean, this was um, a band that weren't. Um, they weren't uh, shatteringly brilliant or anything. They're a pretty good band, and uh, just we were into them at school. Um, uh, the um, the draw card for for most of us was the fact Ginger Baker was in the band, hence the Baker, um, who we were all into um, from his drumming in Cream mainly. Um, so it was a good chance to, to listen to what he was up to. I can go and see him. I actually saw the band on one of their tours, which was really good. Uh, the um, they were essentially a trio when they started out. The, the Gervitz brothers, Adrian and um, Paul Gervitz, guitar and, um, and bass. Uh, Adrian also handled the lead vocals on um, on the first album. They were joined later uh, by um, a guy called Steve Parsons on lead vocals, who went by the name Mr. Snips. And they had a couple of keyboard players with them, variously. Um, John Mitchell, uh, who was on the first two albums, and then Peter Lima, who was on um, who joined actually, I think, for the. Um, no, wait a minute. Peter Lima was on the middle album. So John, yeah, John Mitchell was on the first and the third album because uh, he did three studio albums, and um, uh, yeah, Peter Lima was on the on the um, middle album and the tour I saw them on. So he was he was more of a jazz keyboard player essentially. But uh, but but yeah, they were an interesting band. They 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 were kind of like classic rock band really. They covered a lot of uh, John, a bit of rhythm and blues in there, a bit of a uh, bit of jazz, a bit of um, some some sort of uh, rock ballads are in there as well. Some. Um, Funk stuff as well. It was, it was really quite quite an interesting band. Like I say, not not um, earth shatteringly great, but um, interesting. I think you know, I enjoyed being into them. Uh, they were formed in um, seventy four, lasted till seventy six. Did three studio albums, and that's what I'm going to be ranking today. So let's um, let's start off, shall we? Okay, number three. It was originally number two when I did this first ranking, but I listened to them all again, and there's a bit of a shuffling around going on. Uh, number three is their, th their second album, came out in 1975, and it's called Elysian Encounter. With a lovely little um, Joe Patagno sleeve there, uh, which is a bit, I don't know, it's a bit, a bit misleading in some ways. That looks, to me, that looks like a sci-fi, psychedelic prog kind of sleeve. Um, actually, it looks more like it should be a hot wind sleeve somehow. There's this um, sort of like alien landscape. You've got the band there with these... Um, Strange aliens in their bizarre costumes, the Elysians, I imagine. But um, but yeah, nothing. When you hear the albums, it sort of like doesn't really um, make sense somehow. But anyway, there you go. But uh, yeah, this, this is the, the weakest of the three studio albums, to be honest. Uh, it's the mellowest. Um, I saw the tour. This is the tour I saw them on. They were brilliant. They were a great live band. They were really a lot heavier live and um, just really good. I wasn't quite sure whether it was just uh, my memory playing tricks with me, but I've seen some videos of them on YouTube recently. They, yeah, they were they were pretty good. I mean. Adrian Gervitz is uh, one of those slightly underrated guitarists, really. Um, of course, Ginger Baker, legendary drummer. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, jungle, tribal uh, inf influence beats in a lot of the Baker Gervitz, which, which was in Ginger Baker anyway, I think, because this is the time when he had his um, recording studio over in Africa. Uh, I forget which country it was. Was it Nigeria? I can't remember. It was um, over in Africa somewhere anyway. But, uh, but yeah, this, like I say, a bit mellow, a bit... Uh, the, the bluesy songs are still there. There seems to be more of a concentration on ballads in many ways because that's what Adrian Gervitz became better known for later. He had his um, hit single classic back in uh, the early 80s. Um, there's a track called People, which is probably the best track on the album. She opens it up. Nice bit of cowbell on the intro. There's a track called Time, which isn't too bad, where um, uh, the, the, the vocals sound a bit like Steve Winwood in part, actually. Uh, the the yeah, the vocals do um, with Adrian and, and Mr. Snips. They have that kind of uh, Steve Winwood, Eric Clapton kind of sound about them. Uh, so there is a bit of a cream sound about them in many ways. Obviously, it comes from uh, Baker and um, but um, so yeah. I mean, times not a bad track, um, but yeah, all all in all, a bit bit weak, 
but um, yeah, I mean, it's, if you see it in the bar, give me it anywhere, or you can pick it up there, or it's obviously available for streaming. So give it a listen, see what you think. It's uh, probably worth it buying for the sleeve. It's a really nice, uh, really nice painting. But anyway, there we go. Um, number three, Listening Encounter from 1975. Coming in at number two is the final release in 1976, uh, Hearts on Fire. Which, uh, to be honest, I'm not giving it as much listening as uh, their other two albums because I think when it came out, I bought it because I'd you know, already got the other two. Um, I thought I was, I was kind of into them, but uh, I was slightly disappointed. So I, I didn't give it much time. But in recent years, I've given it, I've sort of revisited it and thought, yeah, it's not too bad. It's a bit heavier and bluesier than the previous album. They've gone back to that kind of bluesier sound, particularly on the opening track, Hearts on Fire, which is not, not a bad track. Then you got Neon Lights and um, uh, Smiling, which aren't, aren't too bad. Uh, one of the strongest tracks on here, close this side one, it's called Flying In and Out of Stardom, which is pretty good. It's an Adrian Gervitz song. Um, yeah, which is pretty good. It kind of, kind of almost sounds a little bit like us, what a lot of the um, bands are doing today, in that kind of indie, rocky kind of sound. But um, yeah, not not a bad album. Um, uh, where are we? We've made any notes here. Tracks of My Life. Oh, yeah, Tracks of My Life. That's a bit of a ballad. Yeah, there's it's, 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 it's a lot of strange ballads in here, but um, but yeah, not a bad album. I don't know who did the sleeve. It, it looks very much like the uh, Renaissance Turn of the Cards um, sleeve. Turn of the Cards Gone Wrong with them, everything on fire. But um, anyway, there we go. That's um, 1976, Hearts on Fire. Um, my second favourite Becky Gerbitz Army album. Which means that the self-titled debut from 1974 is number one with another Patagno sleeve. We're looking very kind of um, slightly alien, but also a little bit Mongolian, as I like. Uh, it's, uh, troops of Kublai Khan. Who knows? So it's not not a gatefold, but the image goes around to the back as well. Kind of a I don't know, post-apocalyptic alien planet. Well, yeah, the, this this is by far the best. It's got them. It was their highest chart, well, the only charting album. The, I think it made the top 20 in the UK. I think it may have charted in the US as well. But it's got some really, really strong tracks on here. you got Help Me, uh, Memory Lane. Um, is Memory Lane the instrumental? I can't remember now. No, Love Is. Love Is, second track in the instrumental. Um, but, yes, yeah, pretty, pretty pretty good album, actually. Um, there's a track called Mad Jack, which was popular. Uh, where there's a bit of spoken word, again, from uh, Ginger Baker. But... Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty good. Uh, the final track's a bit naff. It's called Since Beginning. It all gets a bit uh, nostalgic. Hell, um, where are we? Hell, what's the track on the side? A track called Four Fill, which isn't too bad. I think uh, Patagno's doing, going down with the um, uh, Roger Dean route and doing his own handwriting on the, uh, the track listing at the back there. And then album notes, a bit difficult to read on, in red over that background. But yeah, not, not bad at all. This was... Um, they're definitely the heaviest album of theirs, and um, a bit jazzy in parts, which is uh, yeah, pretty good. Memory Lane is a bit of yeah, is a bit of a good standout one actually. A bit of a classic, classic riff to it. Where you think well, I've heard that before somewhere. But anyway, there you go. That's my number one Baker Gervitz Army album, self-titled debut from 1974. Okay, that's it. That's my brief Baker Gervitz Army album ranking. A band I followed through their entire career, all two years of it, when I, when I was at school. So the, um, I left school in 76, so I think that Hearts on Fire just came out around about the same time I left school, so that was that. Okay, right, some more um, top tens coming. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, I'll be back again soon, so uh, I'll say as usual, bye for now.